forms, and we're just pro I'm just going to introduce JavaScript, um, and that will probably take us to pretty much the end. I wanted to. This is, I think, a good opportunity to introduce JavaScript, um, because I'm assuming most of you have no programming experience. Right, you've never, you haven't programmed before, right? So you've never used Java, or you've never used C sharp or C. So <clears throat> what we've been doing up until now may kind of seem a little bit like programming, and it is in a way, but uh, it very much is not programming. It is we're doing layout, which is it's different than programming, and JavaScript is going to be your first sort of intro to programming. So that being said, I, I know this isn't a programming class. Um, probably <laughs> next week I'm going to spend some time and just talk about programming in general a little bit, just so you can have some, uh, some context when we talk about JavaScript and how, you know, how is it different than what we've been doing so far. Okay? Um, so, but I don't think we'll need to get into that this week. So I think this week we can talk about JavaScript without getting um, heavily into programming. So I may have to today, I may have to gloss over some concepts that I will then, I'll go back to and talk about in more detail uh, next week. Okay? Um, so it's probably good uh, that you have two weeks to do last week's assignment. I think probably the next assignment <clears throat> Actually, I may make, make, make it small enough that it'll be due one week, but I know this, that, that JavaScript will be the newest and probably most difficult part of this for everyone, so I want to make sure you have time to uh, absorb everything. Okay? Okay. Yep? I know regarding uh, last week's assignment, yep. it says that it has to be uploaded to the OS and web server. Yes. Do you figure that out? Uh, so what I need, uh, so if you... Uh, if you had requested it and you don't have access uh, because I need to get a list of you so I'm just trying to think uh, the best way uh, if you send me emails I'm gonna have 10 emails um, yeah probably just send me an email and just saying just in the body just put your student name and email address because I did email them and they just said they need a list of the students who don't have access um, if it doesn't have to be the Ryerson web uh, server, it can be the free one that we we uh, used in replacement of that one. So it just has to be a server. It doesn't have to be Ryerson specifically. And actually, the one the free one is is a mo little more capable than uh, what you get with the Ryerson server because uh, you can do server side scripting. But <clears throat> we won't really get into that class. So for this class, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Okay. Uh, you mean to eat? So no, if you don't, if you couldn't get access to the web server last week, like remember we and some people they saw public underscore and then some people just it said uh, unavailable or something, right? So if it said unavailable, just send me an email. It doesn't matter from where, but just say so. Put your name, student number, and maybe in the subject line, just put server or something. Um, and then I'll I'll compile you into a list and send it to the admin, and hopefully next week it'll be fixed. Yeah. So do we, if, can we just plan on staying with that one and then not? Sure. It's up to you. It's up to you. Yep. That's, remember my speech I gave at the beginning of the semester about how working with web is so difficult? There you go. That is one of the reasons why, right there. No, that's fine. I'm going to be looking at it on my computer. But okay, so are you using Safari? Don't use Safari. Safari is the Internet Explorer of Macintosh. Use Chrome or Firefox. Those are, if not, you know, honestly, probably at this point, Internet Explorer is okay. It's actually not bad. Just for appearances, you don't, like among tech people, you don't want to be seen using Internet Explorer. It is a faux pas, okay? Uh, and I've, uh, I've heard of 
people uh, I've read, you know, this may not be true. I read on the internet somewhere. There was job, uh, people were recruiting for jobs. They could see the browser people were using to submit their resume. And they were not calling back Internet Explorer users. Because what it says a little bit about you. It says you don't research into things. You don't spend the extra, you know, it takes two minutes to install Chrome. And it's just a better browser. It just works, right? So trust me, use Chrome and use Firefox and you will be the cool tech person, okay? No longer the nerdy, uh, you know, Internet Explorer user, okay, right? Internet Explorer users are stuffy business people, right? Chrome are cool hacker geeks, right? Uh, so you want to be the second person. You don't want to be the stuffy business person, okay? Okay, let's do a quick review of what we did last week. Okay, so let's look at our um, our inner, our uh, HTML page. So we'll look at it in code, and we'll look at it um, in Chrome. Okay, so let's look at our code. So uh, you know the HTML looks pretty similar. We just have our HTML tags that encompass everything, and then we have our head tag. And in this case, all we have is a link to our style sheet. Uh, as we get involved with JavaScript. We're going to put more things here. Not too many more, but a little bit more. Um, so you'll note. So what we did last week is we used. Uh, was this the one I? Yeah. So we used div tags. Remember, we used div and div tags are these empty elements that don't really do anything except they're a box. It's just a box, like in our box model, right? Remember our box model. You guys should. Blow this up, print it out, you know, and put this on your in your bedroom wall or something, right? This is what we this is what we what you always want to remember the box model. If you have this embedded in your head in your mind, then CSS will just make sense, okay? So remember, we manipulated the margin, the border, the padding, not so much the content, but we manipulated mostly the margin and the padding to squish our boxes to squish the content of our boxes, uh, to, to make boxes further apart from each other, right? So we use, we don't, we try not to use absolute positioning. Using CSS, you can position elements absolutely. You could say, I want this div box, I want the left corner to be at pixel 102x and, you know, 322. That's where it's going to be. You can do that. But we want to avoid using absolute positioning and sizing because we want our web layout to be fluid right we want it to we want our content to reflow based on the width of our browser that's the ultimate goal we don't want anyone to ever have to scroll side to side we want to avoid that almost at all costs okay so uh, so remember, we have we have our our big div box, which goes all the way around everything here, right? That was our this was the div container, and then so notice that you know the HTML reflects, uh, you know the positioning of the HTML reflects what's going on in the web page. So you know the container is goes around everything else in your HTML. So notice that our container here, this black line, goes around everything else, right? And then notice here we have our, our div header and our div content and our div footer, okay? So header is above content in our, in our code and also in our document, okay? And our paragraph tag is inside our content. Area. So we have our content div tag, and then inside we have our paragraph tag. Right? So if I take away the style, I'm, I'm taking away so there will be no more style anymore. So see the layout is, the CSS is so important to the layout. Without CSS, this is all you get. Bait, like Craigslist, not even Craigslist, right? Craigslist light, essentially. Um, so we need to have style sheet, right? To then, so 
All the HTML does, remember, is just define relationships between the elements, right? This element is above this element, below this element, inside this element, right? But that doesn't really have much effect on the page until <laughs> you utilize our style sheet, which was here. And now, so now we see all these, uh, uh, are these manipulations that we do of our div tags, right? So in this case, we used uh, an absolute width for the container, um, and but we didn't use any absolute positioning. We're still letting it flow uh, vertically, right? Uh, and then, oh, what else is going on here? Mid, min. Huh, there's a layer there. So, um, so we style our header and our, so we give it a height and we gave it, remember we can style only one side or any of the sides of the border if we want. So in this case, uh, we set the bottom of the header div tag. We turn that on so that there's a line here. So see that line? That's the bottom border of the div, of the header div tag. Okay. Um, and then we styled the content, same kind of, we gave it a background color. We, we increased the padding so that uh, pushed the paragraph away from our edge here. We, we increased the distance here. Uh, what else did we do? We, then we styled our top nav. So the first thing we did was we styled the top nav div tag, but then we used some, <clears throat> some, in, some advanced CSS this is an advanced CSS selection. So we're saying all LIs within top nav style this way. Right? And then we can take that further. We can be more specific. We'll say all the A's inside L's uh, inside top nav. Okay? And then for this one, it's even more specific. We're saying A's in LIs in top nav, but only when the mouse is hovered over, right? So when we do this, we get, it changes the style, right? So using CSS, we can actually do, uh, you know, a fair bit of animation or, you know, minor, like very minor intera interactivity, right? So here we're, you know, we're reacting to, the, to how the user's moving the mouse. Um, there's some, probably later on, uh, we'll come back to CSS. I'll show you some uh, more advanced things. Uh, I don't want to get too advanced in CSS because what's coming after probably two, uh, we'll probably do two, maybe three weeks of JavaScript, then I'm going to jump to something called jQuery, which is a JavaScript library that makes, so actually using, working with JavaScript can be very, very difficult for a couple of reasons I'll, I'll explain later, but jQuery basically makes it easier to do. So I don't want to get too complex with CSS because really, um, you know, I'm showing you these bare bones, low level stuff, but you rarely, if, you know, if you're doing this professionally, you would rarely work at this level, right? I'm just, I'm showing you this level so that when we go to the next level, you understand what's going on, but you would never, you don't really do uh, like a, there are frameworks and libraries that allow you to not have to do the pure CSS and HTML that we've been doing, right? But I, you need to know about it very much so. You need to be able to do it so that you, in order to use the higher level libraries, okay? So we'll come back to that. Um, any questions about what we did last week? about if you have any if you know after today if you have any questions uh, with your assignment I can take a look. Yep. I think I'm pretty good on the content, but yeah. if you could just go back to your Yep. Program. Yep. Sorry. How can you, how do you get the little things on the side that tell you like what's the start and what's the close? Do you see like the red little square on the side? Your this one? Yeah. Yeah? Um, that is, let's see, you know what, I don't actually use those a lot. Uh, you know, I had one student that, that used that so much, he had all these 
huge lines of code, and they'd all be shrunk, and so it was just one line. And I thought it was, it was so hard to look through his code, because everything was all tidied up, right? Uh, well, what's useful about it, though? Like, I it, you mean to hide big swaths of code? Uh, uh, I'm sure there is a way. You might have to turn... Oh, there, what was that? <coughs> there you go. Ah. Oh, but if, like, just for the sake of showing it all the time, so that you can Not for compiling things. What do you mean? I don't. I, I'm a little confused. Okay. Yep. Um, see how it basically tells you what's the start and what's the finish. Oh well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean here and here? Yeah. Yeah. Like not for the purposes of compacting or shrinking. Oh, just, just for just seeing for it. Seeing um, I, no, I don't okay. think so. That's part of the reason why I tab everything. Because then I can just look, oop, look there, right? I just look down, straight line, and there's, there's my ending. So one way to combat that is to make, try and tab as best as you can. And then it then, because uh, your eye is really good at picking out vertical, like you can, you, can, you can detect one pixel variation on the vertical axis. Like if you have a line, and the second half of the line is off by one pixel, you can see that, no problem. Right? So, uh, but if it's all together, you're going to have trouble. Your brain can't pick it out, right? It's harder, but if, if you give it some help by putting white space and tabs, it's a little easier, right? And also, sometimes I like to put space, white space, in between my elements like this, right? And then, it, for me, then this becomes, visually, it becomes a group, right? When you... When, when things are close together, your brain puts groups them together. Like without, without you thinking. It'll do it whether you want to or not, really. So there the are. The reason I ask is because it was just when I saw your other thing, it looked like with the tabs and that, yeah. it just seemed so much easier. Yeah. To um, I, there may be something in Dreamweaver. I would you know, poke around, maybe okay. do, a, do a search. I haven't really uh, uh, looked into something like that. I've never really. Uh, using like that. Okay. Any other questions about <laughs> last week's stuff? Okay. So what we're going to do today <clears throat> is so I've skipped over sort of a uh, fairly big part of HTML for a re for a reason because so so far what we've been doing everything so far has been one way, right? The computer to the user. Now we're going to start getting information going the other way, the user to the computer. We want to get some input now. So everything to date has been output only. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at forms. Okay. And the reason I <coughs> waited to do forms is because, one, <coughs> they're, they're a little more complex than other, some of the, you know, like P is a very easy element. Forms are, get a little more difficult. Second, forms outside the context of JavaScript don't make a heck of a lot of sense. Because without JavaScript, your form will do nothing. It'll just, you'll fill it out, and that's it. Nothing else, you can't do anything else with your form. So I just, I didn't want to leave you hanging by, you know, showing you how to make a form and then you not really seeing how you actually use it. Okay? So. Um, I guess we'll just uh, we'll start. We'll use our, this as as a as a takeoff point for the demo. So actually, let me just um, I'll create a new folder. We'll call this HTML forms uh, and JavaScript intro. Okay. So let's open up our index page. Uh, and I'll throw it in Dreamweaver. Okay. No. Okay. So I think what we want to do is we want to put a form, right? So you all know what I mean by forms, right? So when you go to any site, right, and they want you to fill out information. So they have, you know, little boxes that you type type text into. What are some other form elements? that we can use on the web that you've seen, that you've probably used. So there's text fields. What else are there? 
Think, think to the last web form you filled out. Yep. Drop down menus. Yep. What else we got? Buttons. What else we got? Check boxes. Yes. What else we got? One more related to check boxes. Radio buttons. So uh, everyone knows the difference between a, a check box and a radio button, right? A check box is a square with a check. Here, let's look up here. So a check box. Uh, basically looks like this, but let's look at the uh, HTML version. Uh, so this is a checkbox, okay? And the its cousin, the radio button, looks very similar, but it's round and it has a dot in it. Um, so conceptually, why would you use? I mean, they do the same thing, right? It's a it's a empty shape, and then you can turn the shape, you know, on or off. So why would you use a checkbox versus a radio button? Yep. Yes, yes. So if you want to pick one of a group, you use radio buttons. And that's just by convention. There is no reason technically why you can't use them interchangeably. They do the same thing. It's just by convention. You have, you know, you have to group these together. You could have five radio buttons that are each a part of their own group and then you could select them all. There's nothing technically from stopping you except good practice. Okay, so radio buttons you use when you want to pick one of many, and check boxes you use when you want to pick one or more, or zero or more. Okay, okay. Um, any other form elements? Did we miss any? So we had text field, drop down menu, check boxes, radio, radio buttons, buttons. Text text area, sure. That's like a um, that's a multi-line text field. Yeah, that's a good one. What what did, what did you say? Oh, I was um, a date. Well, that that's getting into advanced. That's not a that's not a built-in HTML form element. Do you mean like a date picker? Like if you click a button and then a calendar pops up, and then you can like say pick December twenty-third or whatever, and then it like that. Is that what you mean? That that's not part of the just out of the box HTML, you would need to get some JavaScript code and probably you could just, f there's millions of them available, but you would have to either program it yourself or download one and plug it into your website. Okay, so let's, let's actually make a form. So we sort of discussed what a, what a form is all about, but let's put one in. Um, so forms work sort of similar to the table, t uh, table tag. Right, so remember with the table, we had table was sort of the, the outside tag, and then inside that tag we had different tag, we TD and TR. Right? So now we're gonna have so we're gonna tell it that we want to create a form by using the form tags. Form tag. So everything between here and here is going to be a form now. Okay? Okay, so if we save that and then look, uh, oh, where's my? Uh, let's go to here so I don't get confused. So if we go here, okay, uh, we won't see anything yet. It's just like an empty table, right? It's just it's not there yet. Okay, so what we want to do uh, is so. You know, most forms um, use uh, text fields, most of them. Okay, so let's let's start off with that. So let's what we're going to do is we use the input tag. Okay, and now this input tag is going to have a couple of attributes. So remember what attributes are. Attributes are like so. If you were talking about attributes for me, right? I'm five eleven. That's my height attribute. The value of my height attribute is 511 and I have blonde hair. That's my, that's the value of my hair attribute, 
right? So the input, one of the attributes for input is going to be the type. So what type of input are we going to be? And we're going to, it's going to be text. That's the type of input we're going to use. Okay, now we're going to, um, so we need to give it a name. Well, we don't need to. Actually, let's come back and do that. Let's just see what we have now. So let's go here and you know, let's close this. I want this. Okay, look what we have. We have a form field, but not much else. There's nothing, I mean, you know, for now, this is all we can do, There's, you know, which is pretty useless, okay? So let's go back here. And what we're going to do, we want to, we need to give each input field a name. It's sort of like an ID when we reference elements with CSS. But now we're going to give it some, something similar. It's going to be called a name, okay? And so what we're going to say is, for, we're going to just call it first name. You can call it anything. You can call it Bob. But you should name it something that is contextually relevant. Okay, for a number of reasons. Okay, so you may have noticed, let's go back, that, that won't actually change anything. Why did I? Okay. So it didn't change anything, but now this thing is labeled. So in a, in a little bit, we're going to use JavaScript to pull whatever was typed in that field. We're going to pull it out and we're going to do something with it. Probably in this class, we're just going to print it on the screen. Okay? But this is the beginning of creating really of useful websites. Websites that can do more than just display information. Right? Okay. So you may have noticed, uh, you know, this field has no label. How do we know where, what to put? It's just text. You have, there's no built-in labeling. You just have to sort of you put it in. Okay? First name. Okay? So remember, HTML ignores white space, so if I do this, it won't. It's, why, why don't I keep closing my page? Uh, oh, oh, it's in Firefox, that's why. So see, there's, there's only one space after there. It ignores white space. So I can put it in. Okay. Uh, so let's, let's do one more. Uh, let's I'm gonna close this. Open up this. Just get rid of this. So let's um, we'll copy this whole thing. Control C. Control V. So last name I'm gonna change it to. And then I'm gonna change this name from first name. I'm gonna change it to last. Okay. I'm just gonna fill up my water bottle. I'll be right back. Okay, so everyone uh, should have something that looks like this. 
Does everybody have that? Okay. Um, so, now I'm going to do something that maybe we shouldn't do, but sometimes there are rules and then, uh, you know, there's rules of thumb. They're not meant to tie your hands behind your back, but generally you should try and do that. What? Okay. Guidelines, exactly. But guidelines are meant to be, you know, they're up to, to you really if you want to follow them. So. You know, normally, maybe what we might want to do, if I really wanted to, you know, stick to the guidelines, I might wrap this in a paragraph, something like that. Because basically what I want is I want each of these lines on separate lines. Okay, so this right here, this is the line break tag. You should use that sparingly, very sparingly, if at all. Okay, what this will do is it'll put a new line here, like so. Okay, but now see if I want to, let's say if I wanted to increase the distance here, uh, like I'm a little limited. So another way to do it, let's, let's try it this way. Let's, so I might just make a paragraph out of these, like this. But then it, probably it's going to be too far apart, and then I, I might need to go into maybe CSS and adjust it. But let's see how that looks. Okay, not bad. But so let's turn off the. Uh, we'll go into our style sheet here, and I'm going to turn off the borders on P. So now we have something that looks like that. Okay. So I kind of just showed you the wrong way and the right way to do it. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, probably the most one other than so the text field uh, is probably the most popular type of form input. Probably the second most one which you guys have probably used when you came in here uh, is the password, right? So you wouldn't want someone to type their password in if just an open field like that, right? That's insecure. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our source code. And I'm going to copy and paste this whole thing. And we'll put it right here. And so I'm going to change the label to password. Okay. And I'm going to change the name to password. Okay. And finally, I'm going to change the type from text to password. So let's see what we have. <clears throat> it's starting to look like a real website. Any questions so far? Pretty straightforward, right? Okay, a couple of more things. Let's keep moving. So, uh, let's. We're going to try um, some, a radio button. Okay? So, again, we will copy and paste our line. We should copy and paste whenever we can. Okay? Because, one, it helps my laziness, and two, <laughs> It's less error prone, right? If I type something out, you know, I make maybe I make 0.01% errors. That's you know, in this document there's going to be two or three errors, right? So, if you copy and paste, no errors, right? Because remember, you know, the stuff you 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 mess up and you guys have all seen it now. Most I fixed errors like for every one of you is you know, you forget a comma or something or you know, you have a single quote instead of a double, something like that. But if you co if you copy a statement that you know is correct and then just change the guts, the stuff you need to change, 
then those types of errors are less, you don't have them as much. They're less. Okay, so what we want to do now, we're going to uh, change this from password, and let's just change, uh, let's do, um, so we'll say, let's do it for, like for a school. So we'll say status, okay? We'll call it status. And the type is going to be radio, and the uh, name is going to be uh, status, okay. and the value is going to equal, let's say, student. We're going to put all the radio buttons inside the paragraph, like so. Okay. Uh, so let's see here. Actually, I think what we need to do. Uh, so what we need to do is. So because I need, I want a label for the radio button group, but then I want labels for each button. So what I might do is do this. So I'll put status up here in this paragraph. We'll close it off and then open up another paragraph for the actual radio buttons. And then here I'll put student. Okay. So now if we refresh, we have that. So that's, uh, so let's create a couple more. So we'll say instructor, and then we have to change the value here. That'll, this will come into play later when we, when we, when we uh, start using JavaScript. Okay, so right now this is sort of in the back, background. And I think, let's actually put the label on the right side. Not really. I mean, it does, you know, you're, it's going to work. It's just at this point now, we're getting to the point where now we have to consider usability or, you know, aesthetics. So sometimes. You know, you have to consider usability. So let's say if we had, let's say we have one more. I'm going to copy this one more time. So let's say uh, Dean. Okay. So, you know, when we have three, so, okay, see, wh where is a possible source of confusion? Well, you know what, I'm going to give an, a, a probably ha at least half a lecture on usability and sort of how to do mock-ups and things, but looking at our radio buttons, what is a potential problem with how I have it set up there? What's a potential problem? Why is that problematic? What's a mistake that someone might make? Crowded? Okay, so, but I mean being crowded in and of itself is not, is not bad. But what might it, the being crowded? What might that cause? Yeah. Well, it might cause the person to pick the wrong one because they think it's I don't know on the right instead of on the left. Or vice versa. Right. So remember, I said your eye groups together things that are close together. So if they're all close together, so which if I want to pick instructor, which one do I pick? This one or this one? You know, it's. There's only three, so it's not too bad. What if I had five and I wanted to pick Dean? Then I have to then I have to do some deduction. I have to say, oh, okay, well, student is on. You know what I mean? So you want to try and avoid that. So there's, you know, what we could do. We could try and put more space between. We could put them on separate lines like this. Let's try that. That's probably the most effective. We'll just put some line breaks at the end, and then that that's not a problem anymore. 
it's it's crystal clear now which label is associated with which radio button. Okay? Yep. Uh, without the line breaks? Yes, I did. Oh, maybe there, but it should, like this. Did you, oh, no, but do you have them each in paragraphs? Yeah. Yeah, that's why. So you could, so remember, a paragraph has a line break included already. So you could either, you could, so here, see what I did is I put all of the radio buttons inside one paragraph. So you could either, you know, put each one in a paragraph or do the line, the line breaks like I did. Okay. So remember, you know, the computer will just do what you tell it. It's not going to say, hey, I don't think that's a good design decision. It'll just do it. So you have to, you know, you have to make sure that y your design is appropriate. Right? And user friendly. Okay. Uh, so let's keep going. There's a few more that I want to cover. Uh, let's do a checkbox. So again, let's copy this because we know this works. And below our paragraph. So we're going to change our type to, you guessed it, checkbox. And uh, let's say the name, we'll call it vehicle. Okay. And the value, the first one is, we'll say, bike. Okay, I rode my bike in today. And then we could do, let's copy this row again. Copy, paste, okay. Uh, you should get to know your home and end keys. Do you guys ever use your home and end keys? You know what home does? What does home do? Home takes you to the beginning of the line. End takes you to the end of the line. So I use home and end a lot to highlight a line. So I might, you know, pick a line, go home, shift, end, right? Rather than it's, you know, the keyboard is actually, if you know your way around the keyboard, it's much faster than the mouse. Okay? So we'll change this check checkbox. We'll change the, uh, we'll say car, and we have to change the label as well. And let's do one more. What's another vehicle? Maybe plane. DTC. Okay. So let's save and refresh. Here we go. Okay, so notice the radio button. You know, I can only pick one. Okay. Now, if I do this, if I go back here and I change the name to status two, I changed one. Okay. So now, what will happen? So now we can these two still remain part of the group. Okay. But this one now is its own group. So you group the radio buttons together by giving them the same name. Okay? So again, so if they all have the same name, status, 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 that means they're part of the group called status. Okay? So if I save it here and go back here, now I can only pick one of these three. These are grouped together conceptually. Okay? But if I go back here and I put one of them in a different group, by changing its name, now you know it's it it now we can select both. So my point is proximity has no meaning on on your uh, radio buttons. It's not how close they are or if they're in a visual group that you group together visually. It matters what the name is if they all have the same name. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we have this form now, but we can't really do anything with it, right? What, what's the big thing that's mi still missing from this form? A button. Yes, we need to tell, the, tell our web page we want to submit this form for processing, whatever that means, whatever that would entail, okay? So, we have to close off our form 
with a button. So at the bottom here, we're going to put uh, finally an input type of type sub oh, of type submit. Okay, <coughs> and the value. This is what's going to be printed on the button. We're going to call it submit. Okay. Let's save and have a look. Okay, here we go. So what just happened? Did you see that? So I filled out my form and I submitted it. Yeah, that's a good instinct. So basically what what we're we're not submitting it anywhere. At this point it's just sort of refreshing the page. Okay? Um but what we have to do now is we need to uh, we need to give the form uh, a, uh, a file that will process the form. Okay, so I think I just want to uh, stop here for a second because this is pretty much the end of forms. Like that's it. There's not much more. Uh, oh, I guess we didn't do. Um, uh, let's do a drop down, and then that'll be it. Um, so a drop down is similar. Uh, what else? What are the other ones we talked about? I think that was it, right? So let's just put a drop down in just for. Uh, oh, text area. We'll do that one too. So uh, the way we do a drop down is we use the select tag. So we close that off. Okay. And then inside, we're going to give it options. So we're going to say option value equals, uh, so let's say one. It can be anything. Okay, and we'll close our option. And then we'll put the actual number one. That's, that's, like our, that's our label. Okay, and now let's just copy this a couple times. So we'll just change it to two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and let's refresh. Okay, so here's our drop down. Okay, everyone got that one. And one more. We'll just put a line break here. And we'll say, so text area, it's actually just text area. And we'll close that off. Okay, and then we, it needs a few attributes. So we need to tell it how many rows we want to have. And we want to tell it how many columns we want to have. And then we can put some text in there already. So this text will be inside the text area. Okay, save it, and there we go. Oh, why is there that space there? Okay, so everybody now has a form with 
two text fields, a password field, uh, radio buttons, checkboxes, a drop down, and a text area. Okay, and a submit button. Okay, so that's we've basically covered now all the front end elements of a form. Okay, so any questions about that? Right, pretty straightforward. It's just like you know, it's HTML. I think you guys are fairly, hopefully, comfortable. A little more comfortable with HTML now. Okay, so what I want to do is uh, I'm just going to take a break from uh, coding for a second. I just I'm going to show you some some lecture slides. So I'm going to introduce JavaScript now. Okay, because so we've reached an impasse. <clears throat> so we want to we want to create some interactivity now in our website. And we've gone as far as we can with HTML and CSS. So in order to go further now, we need to bring in another technology okay, called JavaScript. So let me just bring up my notes here. Probably this one here. Yep. Okay. So JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. Okay? How many of you have heard of Java? Okay? So Java is a desktop development, cross-platform desktop, primarily desktop development programming language. It's a language. Okay? So uh, uh, what, what's something that's made in Java? Can't think of anything offhand that you guys well know. Um, anyways, if like so, for example, when I learned how to program in my computer science degree, we used Java, right, to to create programs. So Java is something that you it, it you know it, it's code you compile it and then you run it on your desktop. JavaScript is totally different, and the only thing similar between Java and JavaScript is basically the name. And the syntax is similar, but it, not really. I mean, it's, it's similar, but it's still different. Okay? The only reason uh, it's called JavaScript I, it was because of, you know, fashion. Like, so when, uh, when the first browser came out, uh, that's right around the time when Java was really hot. It was a new hot thing. And so I'm sure there's some uh, some executive at Netscape that was like, "Oh, we gotta we gotta call this thing Java something." And they're like, oh, "Okay, we'll call it JavaScript," because uh, I think it was inif initially called like LiveScript or something. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so this is a brief introduction to JavaScript. What is this thing called JavaScript? Okay, um, so you know, again, I. This isn't a programming course. I don't expect you to be able to memorize this stuff. You know, there's no tests on the, in this course anyway, so you don't really need to be worried about that. Okay? If again, if you're having trouble, you can ask me. You can Google things. Okay? Not not a big deal. Okay. So I'm going to probably next week. I'm going to try and I'm going to show you some sort of high level concepts uh, that encompass basically everything we need for programming. It's actually not that complex. And then I'm going to actually show you a little bit of programming. Okay? Okay, so here's some, just some history. Again, it's not Java. It's different. They are different technologies. Okay? Originally called LiveScript. There you go. Um, so it was released as part of Netscape Navigator. Okay? Did anyone ever use Navigator? Yes? Old school. Okay? That was, that was the first... Oh, basically the first browser. Well, second. Before that, there was one called Mosaic, uh, and I think this fall. I think believe Netscape followed from that. Um, okay. So, what is this thing called JavaScript? What is it? Uh, so, JavaScript is a client-side programming scripting language. Okay, what does that mean? Okay. Client side, you should know what that means. What does client side mean? What's what if it's not client side, what what is it? Server side. 
So if something is client side, what does that mean? Is HTML server side or client side? Client side. Is CSS server side or client side? Client side. Is JavaScript server side or client side? Client side. So what does that mean? What does that? Yeah, we can we can repeat it, but what is what does it mean that it's client side? That we need it in our website, not in the server that the website's on. No, it's okay. Here's the here's the funny thing. All the code, all code, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, it starts on the server. So in a way, it's, I mean, it's not server side. So, you know, a web, all the code for your website, it's on the server, okay? And then the server sends some stuff to your computer. So what it means by client side, it means that your computer is processing that code, okay? If it's server side, it means the server's computer is processing that code. And usually what, so if I use a server side script, like PHP, what that'll, so I could, let's say I could run some very complex calculation, run that on my server, then the server, so it'll, the server machinery will calculate, do the, do the algorithm, then all it will do is spit the result back to my client machine, okay? So JavaScript is a programming language that is interpreted by your browser on your computer. Okay? So there is inside Chrome, inside Firefox, inside Internet Explorer, there is a special bit of programming that will look will in, interpret JavaScript code and then do things on the web page depending on what's in that code. Okay? So just Java Java not JavaScript is a re it's a programming language. That means you compile the code into machine code. Okay? So when you work with Java or C sharp or C, you work with source code like we've been doing. Source code is, is textual code. That's very it's human readable. You can read it. But when you compile Java, it mixes it up into machine code. So that is totally unreadable. It's just a bunch of ones and zeros. You cannot make any sense of it. But that is the only thing the computer, your processor, can make sense of. JavaScript is a little bit different. It's a scripting language. It's not a real language. JavaScript is never compiled. It's never compiled into machine code. And it's not interpreted by your processor. It's interpreted by the browser. That may not seem like a big deal, but it just, you know, your processor is much faster because your browser is running on your processor. So, you know, there's a layer between your JavaScript code and the processor. If you use Java, not JavaScript, it's going to talk directly to your processor. Whereas JavaScript goes through your browser, then your browser talks to the processor. Okay, actually it talks to your operating system, which talks to your processor. Okay, so there's a couple of layers there. So that being said, um, and JavaScript is getting much, much better, but what you can do with it is fairly limited. Like you wouldn't, you can, but you probably shouldn't create a 3D game with JavaScript. Okay? You, you can do that with a real programming language. So what can JavaScript do? What can we do? So far we've just been laying out text and images. So JavaScript is more action-oriented. Okay, it does things. It it can do math. It can it can make calculations. It can manipulate data, right? It could take in a string and reverse the, the characters. You can manipulate HTML and CSS. So you can lay out your page like we've been doing, and then using JavaScript you can change that layout or add to the layout or take things out or animate parts okay you can manipulate different parts of of your code after the fact right after you've coded it
Okay, uh, you can add thing interactivity. You know, so a lot of you 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 would use JavaScript to cr give your forms interactivity. So, for example, a lot of um, you know, it's really annoying when you uh, submit a form and then it returns you and says, oh, you forgot some fields, right? Why not, if I skip a field, pop up a message right there telling me, like, don't submit it. Don't let me submit it. You should, you should highlight the field and say, fill this out. Okay, you can do that with JavaScript. Okay? So, essentially, what it does is it adds some functionality to your to your program okay so we could do things like um, we could do form validation right so let's say let's say we have um, a field that's going to store a postal code what's one really easy thing we could check to make sure that that is at least possibly valid What's a really easy thing we could check? So just like forget the computer altogether. If someone gave you a postal code, <coughs> what's one way you could rule out that? So if it was incorrect, you could say this isn't a real postal code. Even even less even simpler than that. Yep. Even simpler than that. Six. It has to be six, right? So we could check. We could we could say how many characters are in that field. We could JavaScript will tell us, and then we could say, uh, well, if it's not six, then you need to fix it. Okay. Then you know. So we could check to see if it's six. If it is six, then we could start doing some of those other more complex. Like we could check to see that it goes letter number letter number letter number. Then we could check. Maybe we could match, you know, we could match it against the problem. You know, there's a many things we could do. Okay, how about a, f uh, a phone number? How could we check if that's valid? Yeah. So it has to be seven or ten, including area code. What's another one we could just quickly do? Yep. Numbers. numbers, no letters. You can't have letters in a phone number. Okay. If you have letters, then you can, or you know, no funny characters. Has to be numerics. Maybe a hyphen. Uh, but what I would do in that case to get rid of, you know, for let's say if we had a phone number, I would put three fields: one for the area code, one for the uh, other part, and you know, three and four. I'm sure, there's terms for those numbers. I don't know what they are. Okay. You always want to try and reduce errors as much as you can up front. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Okay. So this is just some stuff that we've, uh, we've already looked at. So JavaScript is a client-side technology, which means that it's run by your browser on your computer. So when we do JavaScript, we don't need, you don't need to load it onto a server. You can just run it on your machine, and your browser will run it. Okay? Um, <laughs> Um, users can disable JavaScript, but I think it's probably safe to assume that they don't. If you don't have JavaScript enabled, your, your web browsing uh, experience will be terrible. I, most sites won't even work. So, unless, you know, I think only the, the most paranoid person, security person, would turn off JavaScript. Um, yeah, I've, I've, there's, I've just never had a reason to do it. I can't imagine why someone would want to do that. But it's possible. Okay? So something to keep in mind. Uh, okay, we already talked about this, right? Difference between client and server side. Um, we talked about this, stuff we can do. Uh, okay, I don't think I want to get into this quite yet. I think I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to come back to this. Most of this we won't look at. Okay, here's some stuff we can look at. Okay, so JavaScript, just like CSS, allows us to put code in, to include code in our HTML documents in two ways. Can you guess the two ways? Without, don't look up there. 
<laughs> Can you guess the two ways given what we've learned from CSS? Yes. In a separate file, exactly. Which way do you think I'm going to recommend you do it? Separate file, exactly. Okay, good. You guys are learning. So, um, so you can put your code. You can. So we just put this tag here. Script type equals text JavaScript, and then we can put JavaScript code here, and then your browser will interpret that like as JavaScript. Or the better way is to use this script uh, tag, and then in the source you give it your file name you know, your file.js. JavaScript has the extension .js. Okay? Okay. Sorry. Yep. So you know this stuff isn't completely without rhyme or reason. They, you know, generally these things kind of follow patterns. Sometimes the patterns are you know not always realized, but you know for the most part, um, you know. So you guys were able to figure out the JavaScript thing, you know, based on the pattern with CSS. So that's good. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Let's just go back. What was here? Um, Okay, so we're going to come back. We're going to talk about some of those con concepts that I just skipped right over um, because today I'm just introducing JavaScript. Next week, we're going to start using it a little bit more. Okay? Okay, so that is what JavaScript is. So it is a client-side scripting language. Okay? So let's go back to our Dreamweaver and let's um, do our first little bit of, of JavaScript. Okay? Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to create, we want to link in our uh, our JavaScript file. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do is first we're going to go to our directory where our demo is. HTML forms. Okay. So I'm going to right click and create a new text file. Text document. Okay. Or you could do this. If we were in Dreamweaver, we could say new. And then we can pick JavaScript. But really, it's just going to be a blank file. Okay. And then we could save as whatever we want. Okay. Um, but so let's go back here. So I'm going to rename my text document. We'll call it. Um, let's call it uh, scripts.js. And now Windows will complain, uh, but it's not going to be unstable. We know what we're doing. Okay. So now I'm going to click and drag this over to Dreamweaver so that we can open it up. Okay. So far so good. So now including this file in our index is as easy as including a CSS file. Okay? But we don't use the link tag we use the script tag and we give it a source 
and our source was what did I call it? St did I call it? St what did I call it? Scripts.js, and then we close it and close our script tag. The link thing? You mean like this? No, it's the same. It does the same thing. It's just a little different form. Okay. So let's save and go back here and refresh, but nothing should come up. Okay. So um, remember, I said I, I don't like to go too far without checking if things are working. So one thing I like to do is make sure that my link is correct. Like I have the the file name in here correct, and that the file exists and it's in the right place and all that fun stuff. So one thing. So one concept that we're going to learn about through, Java, through the use of JavaScript is something called a function. Okay, so you can actually you can think back to uh, maybe grade ten or eleven math, like functions, right? Did you guys ever take functions? No. Okay. Well, remember, remember a function was like uh, it was like a formula, right? And the function takes in an input, a number, and then it spits out another number, right? Like a function looked like, it was like this. Let's see here, where's my paint? So for example, where's my shape? Can we draw shapes? Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. So this is my function. Let's call my function uh, add two numbers. Okay? And so my function is going to take in two things and output one thing. Right? So if I put 5 and 4 into my function, what's going to spit out? Nine, exactly. Okay. So do we care what's inside here? How it's doing its thing? No, we don't care. This is a black box. We don't care. Okay, there's a there's some code in here that does who knows what. It's not magic, but it seems like magic. Uh, we don't really care. Right? So what we can so this think of this add two numbers as the function label. That's how we refer to the function. Okay? So JavaScript has many, many, many functions available that will do all sorts of things. Right? So you pass things in, you pass some information in, and it will do something. Okay? So let's use our very first JavaScript function. Okay? And that function is the alert function. So we're going to call the alert function. So let's go back to our example here. So I'll get rid of this. So we're using the alert function. Okay? And what we're going to pass in, we're passing in Oh, hello. We're passing in uh, one thing and it's going to be a string. So we could pass in any message that we want any message that we want. We're going to pass it in and what's the output going to be? The output is going to be a pop-up window with the message. Okay? I can't really move that after the fact. but uh, Okay, so we're going to pass in our message to this function alert it's going to do some magic stuff in the black box and then output out comes the output okay so we've exactly so we've called we we're referencing the function alert 
by calling alert. Then we're going to have two brackets and a semicolon. Okay? All of our lines in JavaScript, we need to end with a semicolon. Okay? I guarantee you that's someone's going to have their code's not going to work and that's why. Because you're missing a semicolon. So always double check your semicolons. Okay. So, what these these um, brackets here are very important. The brackets are will accept our inputs. So the brackets here is like our arrow, input arrow here. Okay, so what we're going to do is in between these brackets, we're going to put two quotes, quote, quote. So that means anything in there is going to be a string. Okay, so um, we're co we'll come back to this next week and talk about variables a little bit more in depth. But there are, there are types of data. Okay. So I think we talked about this a little bit. Remember I said, what is the smallest amount of data you can store? Smallest amount. A bit. Which is also you could, well, it's 0 or 1 or true and false. So that, does anyone know what type, what the name of that type of data is? Um, binary, yes for 1 and 0. No for true and false. What do you call it? What do you call it when your value can be true or false? What's the type of data? What's that called? Boolean? Bool. It's a Boolean value. Boolean values, sorry? Yep. Is either true or false. Okay? Then we can also have the next step up would be integers. What, so what types of numbers can we store in integers? Just thinking back to grade 9 math. What's, so what can't we store in an integer? You can't have a decimal. right? Integers are whole numbers, po positive or negative. Okay? Then we have decimal numbers. That's another type. Those are, those are called floating point. And then what we're using here is called a string. And that is just any, any combination of characters. Exclamation marks, letters, numbers, any combination. It's a string of characters. Okay? So what, anything in between those quotes will be treated as a string. So it's, it'll literally, you know, so we could say 5 plus 5. That won't be 10. That will be 5 plus 5. That's what it's going to show. So let's try that. I'm going to save my JavaScript file. Okay? And I'm going to go back to my uh, HTML and I'm going to refresh. And there we go. Yes? Oh, we could do that. If you want to do uh, the, the cliche uh, intro to programming, hello world. Okay, that's everyone's first programming example. Let's do that. That might be a little more appropriate. Okay, so did everyone get an alert box? If you didn't, what, what could possibly be, what are some of the sources of errors? Why might you not have got this? You forgot your semicolon. Actually, it, it, you know what, it may work without it. I think what would happen is the line after wouldn't work. Let's try it. I'm not going to bet any money, but yeah, it still worked. But if we went, I'm willing, I will, maybe I'll bet a dollar that the second one won't work. Let's try it. Ah, no, it's wrong. Okay, but you should put semicolons in. Okay? Okay. Are you giving the dollar to the world? What's that? Uh, no, it's just going to go back to myself. Into the... Uh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. So, um, that being said, never ever use alerts. Okay? Never. Don't use them. I own, the only reason I use alerts is to basically do what I just did. Is make sure my JavaScript is working. Or sometimes I'll use it as a quick debug. 
like maybe like I need to see the value of a variable, so I'll just I'll print it out in an alert box. But you should never use an alert box as part of your flow. Okay? Because what happens is it locks up everything. See? Uh, so now I, I, there's no way I can access anything behind here. Okay? That is it's extremely annoying. I had well, um, uh, desire to learn. It was, it was the, because when I was teaching at Centennial, desire to learn had these pop ups everywhere, these alert boxes, and it was so annoying because it just, it totally takes you out of the flow. Okay? So you should pretty much never use alert boxes. Okay? But I like to use them just as, because it's a quick way to make sure that JavaScript is working. Okay? Okay. Excellent. So I'm just going to take, we have 20 minutes. I'm going to take another one minute break to refill. Talking is actually very uh, thirst generating. So I'll be right back. Everybody has uh, an alert box coming up. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our, our HTML file and to our form because there's something that we need to do now. We need to tell our form what, so basically form data needs to be processed. I mean, otherwise, what's the point? Do, do any of you just like filling out forms for fun? No. So the form data needs to go somewhere and something has to happen to it. Either it's going to be stored in a database or maybe you're creating a little calculator or something and so you put in some numbers and it will add them together or you know you could create a, a something that converts Fahrenheit to Celsius something like that. Okay? So what we have to do is tell the form where to where to send the data to. What file is going to process our form data? So what we do is we, we give it an action. So the attribute for the form is action. And then what we do is we give it the, uh, what did I call it, scripts.js. OK? And one more thing we have to do is we have to give it a method, a method. And what that means is, so there are two ways that you can pass data um, across pages. So one is called get, and one is called post. Okay, um, and so we're not going to get too much into them, but um, with get when you use the get method what it does is it includes your form data as part of the URL okay so it will when it submits to the file in the URL you will see your name value pairs so you'll see first name equals whatever was put in the field Okay, so that's visible on the URL. 
The other method is called POST, and that's not passed through the URL. It's sort of passed behind the scenes. So why do you think, why would you use GET versus, or why would you use POST versus GET? Why might you not want the, your form values passed on the URL? Why, why might you not want that? Yeah. Yes, exactly. If you're passing secure data, you want to use POST. Okay. Now, why might you want to use GET? Why might you want to put pass information on the URL? That's probably an unfair question. Uh, why? You, because uh, then you can bookmark it. That's the best the answers I can give right now. Is you can then you can record that URL and come back to it. So sometimes, like the way what you can do with a web is instead of having the way I showed you is that you had five separate HTML files. Well, what you can do is you can have one file and different sections of the file will render, let's say, what looks like a different page. Okay? So then what you do is you pass through a number, let's say one, two, three, four, five, that would render each different page. Right? So you pass that through on the URL and then that data gets eaten up by your your page and then it will display whatever page depending on what you pass through. So if you pass it through in the URL, you could bookmark that or copy and paste that URL and then people would go right back to that page. Okay? So if you want if you're passing secure data, you want to use post. Okay? Okay. So um, now what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're passing the data um, into our JavaScript file. Okay, so I'm actually going to use an alert to do this. Uh, I know I said you shouldn't, but this is just for our purposes, right? To get to get ready. Um, okay, hang on. Let me see. Okay, um, we have to do one more thing. Okay, I'm going to throw another concept at you, uh, and I will fill in the blanks next week. But for now, just sort of accept it, and next week I'll explain it. Okay? So, what we need to do is we need to uh, create a function okay, in JavaScript. So, here we are calling a function that's already pre made. Right? Somebody already created the alert function. What, so what we're going to do, we're going to comment this out, slash, slash. Okay? That means that code is effectively gone. doesn't exist. Okay? We're going to save that. So what we're going to do now, we're going to define a function. So remember, a function is just a block of code right? that we want to group together into a black box like thing. So what we do is we write our code once, give it a name, and then we can just reference that code by referencing the name. Right? Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function that will process our form data. Okay? So the way we create a function in JavaScript is we use the key. There's a couple of ways, but this is probably the most straightforward way. So we start off with the keyword function. Okay? Then we need to label our function. Right? So remember before here, we labeled our function uh, the first time add two numbers. Okay? So we're going to call our function validate form. So your function names cannot have spaces. And I believe they have to start with a letter. I think you can start them with some characters like underscore. But generally, I use uh, all alpha and alpha. I generally don't use numbers in my functions. And I use something called camel case. So see how the first, I have multiple words. So the first word is all lowercase. Then every word after that, the first letter is capitalized. So that helps you just visually read it a little easier. You could also, another way is to do it with underscores. 
to me, that's just an extra character. I like camel case. I've always used camel case. Okay? So, um, we've, give it, we've given it a function name. Now we need to put in the brackets. That, so in this case, we're not going to have any input into the function. So we don't put anything in here for now. It's going to be blank. Okay. Then underneath our function, we're going to have an open squiggly brace and then a closed squiggly brace. Just kind of like just like a uh, a CSS statement. Okay. So everything in here is part of the function validate form. Okay? So when I call the function validate form, it's going to run the code in between these braces and only that code. Okay? So let's say what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this alert. I'm going to paste it in here. Because what we're going to do, we're going to use this alert to make sure our function call is working correctly. Okay? Because there's nothing worse than fiddling around with the guts of a function when you're not even calling it correctly. Okay, so we're going to save that. Now we have to go back to our, our form. We have to do one more thing. Okay? We have to... We're going to give it another attribute. And we're going to say that what the attribute is, is on submit. So what we're saying, we're going to say on submit, when you click the submit button, I want you to do something. So in between these quotation marks is where we're going to tell it what to do. Okay. So what we're going to put in here is validate form with brackets. And we want to do we're going to do one more thing. This won't make a lot of sense right now, but we will I'll explain later. We have to put the keyword return. And I know that doesn't make any sense now, but just bear with me for for right now. Okay. Let's save. And so if all goes well, this is how, the, this is how the, the flow should work. So I'm going to click on my button, my submit button. It's going to look up here say, oh, on submit, we want to run this function. And I've included this, I've defined this function in this file up here. So it's going to jump over here, and it's going to jump right here, and it's going to run this. Okay, so let's try it. So we'll refresh, and if I click Submit, we should get a alert. Yes. Okay. Did everyone else get an alert? No? Okay. Why not? What happened? So remember the, remember the possible sources of error. So is this label the same as, exactly the same, character for character, this reference? Double check that. <coughs> Anybody successful? No? Okay. What's that?
let me see your link, JavaScript link. Yeah, uh, no. So say continue. Did you, so did you su submit? Click submit. Perfect. Yeah, you don't have to fill it. Okay, so click submit. Anyone else? Okay. So, now we, I just did that. I used the alert to make sure that my function definition and my function call are connected together. Just like I checked when we first connected our CSS to our HTML, we did a quick little change to make sure it's working, and then we can go beyond that. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now we're going to get a little bit interesting. Okay, so we're going to go back to our JavaScript here. And what we want to do, so, okay, so I have to t teach you about something called the dot notation. Okay, and this, uh, this comes from something called object-oriented programming. Have any of you ever heard of the concept called of object-oriented programming? No? Okay. OOO -O -O, object is a course I've taught an entire course on OOO, so I you know I don't want to get bogged down with it. But essentially, what it means is so um, code is grouped into sections that include um, what the object is and what the object does. So what the object is, so for example, let's say for me, I'm an object. So I am 511, right? I am male. Uh, my name is Carmen. Uh, I have blue eyes, right? Those are what I am. Things that I do. I walk, I talk, I wave, I blink, I breathe. Those are things that I do. So I could, I could make a program that would, let's say, simulate me. And I would have, you know, my, uh, the, my attributes I would have and my actions I would have grouped together. Okay? So what we can do is we can, we can access parts of, so let's say uh, you had the object Carmen. That's me. Okay? And you wanted to see what color my eyes were. So you would say Carmen dot eye color. Okay? And the value of that would be blue. Okay, so if I said let's say I did this. Alert right? Our alert function and I passed in Carmen dot eye color. What's it gonna print? On the on the pop up, yeah, you don't need quotes because it's not a string; it's different. Blue, it's going to say blue. So what if I say Carmen dot name? What's it going to print? Carmen, right? So what about this? What if I said Carmen dot name dot number of characters? What's it going to print now? Six. It's going to print out six, right? So see, like you can have objects inside objects inside objects, right? Like so there's the object me, Carmen, and then my object arm is part of me, the bigger object, and then hand is part of arm, which is part of me, right? So you can break it down. It's the same thing with JavaScript, okay? So now, instead of me, now what we're going to reference is the, our web page. And we reference that, it's called the document. That's the main object. That's, the old, that's like me. That's like Carmen, right? So document is the web page, the whole page, okay? And now what we, we want to access a specific part of the page. 
right? So remember over here, I was saying, I want, you know, I don't want to know everything about Carmen. I just want the name. So in this case, what do we want? We want the forms, right? So we're going to say document dot forms, okay? So that will give us access to all forms in our document, okay? So now we're going to go into the forms. We're going to go another layer in, okay? And we don't actually use the dot. We use something else. So we're going to use, so we're going to use uh, open and close square bracket, okay? And then inside we're going to have quotes. And inside the quote, we're going to put, uh, oh, did I give it a name? Uh, I guess I didn't give it a name. So I need, we need to go back to our form, and we need to give it a name so we can reference it. So I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it my form. Now we'll save it and let's go back to JavaScript. So in forms now, so we don't want all forms, we just want one form. And we want my form. Okay? And then we don't want the whole form, we want to access one part of the form, like one text field or one checkbox. So what we would do is we're going to use we're going to have another pair of square brackets and another pair of quotes and this time we're going to put the name of one of the fields. Let's start with first name. Right? Remember we gave it these fields and we also gave it a name and I said later on we're going to use the name. Now it's later on. So we're going to copy this first name we're going to go back to our JavaScript and we're going to paste it there. Okay? And then finally, we have one more step. So even, you know, the the element itself has many aspects to it. Right? There's the the size of the element, the width, the height, the position. We don't want that. We want the value. We want to know what did someone type in that box. So, what are we going to do? We're going to say dot value. Okay? So see how there's sort of a hierarchy of things? So the f at first, we're referencing the whole web page. And then we're saying, I only want a subset of that, which is I only want the forms. And then we're saying, I only want a subset of those. I only want my form, the form called my form. And then I only want a subset of that. I only want one field called first name. And I only want one part of that field. I only want the value. And so we've drilled down a bunch of layers. And now we can access the actual thing. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this. We're going to highlight it and cut it. And we're going to highlight everything in here, including the, the quotations. Okay? Because we're not dealing with a string anymore. We're dealing with a variable which I will explain more next week. Okay? So in your alert you should have this. Okay. Save and refresh. Oops back. So now let's type something in the, this field and let's submit. Oops, what happened? Uh, oh, I didn't save my index file. So I'm saving my index file. And I'm going back here, refreshing, going back, refreshing, filling in my form, clicking submit, and there you go. So whatever text was in your text field 
should now appear in your alert box. Okay, so if you do it again, so now we are starting to approach something resembling a dynamic page, right? Your website is now doing something different depending on the input of the user. Okay, this is the beginning of a dynamic page. Okay, so like Facebook looks different if you log in than if I log in. It's dynamic, it's different. So there's programming logic in the back that reads the username and says, oh, this is user 5. He wants this content, so display that. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I think I'm actually going to leave us there. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much JavaScript. Just wanted to give you a little sense of it. Next week we're gonna we're gonna do a lot more. We're gonna get our hands more dirty with this stuff. Um, and then so next week your assignment is due. So you have uh, about an hour today. I'll be here. If you need any help uh, finishing stuff up, uh, and then you have till next uh, next class before next class to submit. So a reminder is just submit a link. So upload your code to either the free server that we we looked at last week, or if I can get your student servers up and running by next week, I'll send out information for that, and you can load it up there. And then just submit a link in the Dropbox. Okay. Okay. So let's just quickly recap what we learned today, because it's you know it's getting the, the, this course is getting more and more complex, more and more complex. So we want to make sure that you're you're on board. So before, we started off with forms, right? And I, I think you can maybe see now why I've waited to include forms until now, right? Because without starting without JavaScript, forms are nothing. You can't do anything. With um, so we looked at the form tag itself, and then we looked at basically, I think we covered all of them, at least the ones that are included just with standard HTML. So we looked at input text, uh, input password, radio buttons, checkboxes, drop downs, text areas, and submit buttons. Okay, those are the, those are the big ones. There's a few other ones, but these are the ones, you know, 99% of your forms will be made from this. Okay, then we went on to, we looked at JavaScript for the first time today. Okay, so we learned that JavaScript is not Java. They're not related at all besides the name. We learned that JavaScript is a client-side scripting language, which means the code that we write, so this code here that we've written is interpreted by the browser. So there's a chance Internet Explorer may do things slightly different than Chrome. Okay? And actually, I'm going to show you a JavaScript library, so it's another level above, and what it, it, it handles all that for you. So you work at a high level, and then it has a bunch of stuff below that will manage the different browsers and stuff for you. Okay? Um, so we learned, uh, what else did we learn? So it's a, it's a scripting language interpreted by your browser, and so it's client-side. What can we do with JavaScript? We can basically do action things. We can do math. We can manipulate our uh, HTML document. We can do animation. We can do form validation. So let me just quickly show you. Um, so I, I used to teach um, uh, game programming. And we would create video games You basically uh, with what we've learned now and probably one more class and you could create a game essentially okay so let's look at the very first one uh, this one so this here no that's not it oh maybe it is okay so this pong game is done with javascript okay so see these if you can look at I think I have some cool sound effects too on this one <laughs> Okay, so let's take a look here. This is actually a lot simpler. You guys know a lot, a great deal of this. Ah! Let's pause that. Yeah. He scored on me. Okay, let's look at the source code here, and you'll you'll start you'll understand this now. Oh, that's the okay. Look at this here. This is our HTML, right? So look, we have look at these. You guys know what these are. 
div tags, right? So we have one big, big div tag called game. And that is this big green thing. Okay? Then we have, uh, where did I go? Then we have another div tag in here called playground. And inside playground, we have paddle A, paddle B, and the ball. So these things here, these are just div tags. Div tag, div, div tag, div tag. And I have some JavaScript code running in a loop. We're going to learn about loops next week. So it's just, I put a, a bunch of code, and I put it in a loop, and the, the computer just runs that code over and over and over and over and over again. So all I'm saying, each time I run through the loop, I just say, change, add one to the X and Y position. And then it moves it over. And then the next time it loops, it adds another one. It moves it over, it moves it over, it moves it over. And then you get this little animation effect. Okay? So you could, by the end of this course, you could do this. I won't teach you how to do it. I mean, you'd have the tech skills. You'd probably need to learn a little bit more. But you'd basically have the tech skills to do something like this. Okay? Okay. Um... So we learned about alert boxes. We learned that we should only ever use them just for our own testing purposes. You should never ever use an alert box in a website. They are extremely annoying and not user friendly. So do not use them other than just to do the stuff we were doing today. Making sure that our link was working, making sure that everything's working. Okay? Uh, we learned that you can link, you can include JavaScript in two ways. We can embed it directly in the page, which I didn't even show you. Uh, it basically works the same way. You just in, you would put your code between these tags instead of in here. Okay. And again, I recommend you do it in a separate file. Okay, because usually, you know, you'd have one function that's called from many many places, just like with CSS, right? You you style your paragraph one in one place. But then there's paragraphs all throughout your web page that then are styled by that one spot. Right? So functions are similar. You're trying to reduce the amount of code that you have. Okay? Um, and then the last thing we learned is just basically how to access our form data. So we just we just scratched the surface on that. Um, so we first we accessed the document and then we drilled down further. Then we accessed all the forms, and then we accessed only the form called my form, and then we accessed only the field in my form called first name, and then we accessed the value of that field. And then, so all of that re resolves down to whatever was in our text field. Whatever was here. Where'd my site go? What the hell? So it's ever in here. Okay. So see how this thing, this is a this is a variable, which means it's just a, a storage container that holds the actual information. Okay. Next week I'm going to go through. I'm going to explain. There's three basic things in programming: if statements, conditional statements, variables, which store information, and loops. If you know those three things, you know how to program. If you understand those concepts, you know how to program. Maybe not in a specific language, but you know how you have the concept of programming, which is the most important part. Okay? So, I'm going to leave it there. We'll stop officially stop the video here.